Hello, and welcome to Real Day Trading. This video is one of the most requested I get, which is to go over the 10 step guide getting started as a day trader. Who is this video for? Well, if you are not consistently profitable, and that means any new trader, any current trader, I don't care if you've been trading for five months or five years, if you are not consistently profitable month after month, this video is for you. If you are, if you're a consistently profitable trader every month, you're able to take profits out and pay yourself that salary, you don't need this. But if you are not consistently profitable, you do. And this means for a lot of you, I would recommend going back to the beginning, even if you've been trading for a while. Okay, so let's get started. And I will tell you how long each step will take. Step one, find a broker. Fill this one out already, we'll fill the rest out together. This is one of the simpler steps. A couple of questions you need to ask. First, what are their rates, their commissions, their fees? How much do they charge per option contract? Do they have hidden fees? What's the interest charge on shorts? You can do an easy comparison online between brokers. You will find, though, that the ones that are quote unquote cheaper do not have great platforms. What do I mean by a great platform? Well, this is Thinkorswim. I consider it a decent platform. In terms of functionality, it is filled with a million different things you could do, but it's clunky. It's not as easy to learn. It's not very user-friendly. There's a huge learning curve. I do love their active trader, right? Very easy just to take a trade here, buy or sell or short on either side, looking at this ladder. You can annotate their charts and you can draw, draw trend lines pretty easily like that. But like I said, it's not the most intuitive in the world. They have a tremendous number of studies in here that you can go through, just about any study you can think of. And it is programmable, which means if you don't like uh, the studies they have or you want a different study, you can make your own. You know, you can, I want an alert when the three crosses the eight EMA on a five minute basis when it's over VWAP. Okay, you can write that study. Charting. Like I said, it's very important, but as you'll see later on, many full-time traders use one platform as their broker and one to do their charting. Does not have to be the same platform. Trading interface is important. How easy is it to make a trade? On Thinkorswim, I find it incredibly easy to trade options, to trade stocks. It you know, you can do hotkeys, it's a click of a mouse. It's really easy. Um, so much so that a lot of people who use Thinkorswim after using it for a while um, really don't want to switch to any other platform. But TradeStation, Fidel, I mean, there's a whole bunch out there that you're only going to find out is if you experiment. Download them and play around with it. For a lot of them, you can get real-time data feed with just a very small deposit, $500, something like that. And you also want to check the customer service. How long does it take to wait before you get someone on the phone? How knowledgeable are they? Meritrade, wait times, great. Level of expertise, eh. I've gotten complete morons and I've gotten people who know what they're talking about. But even the morons are willing to help there. So. That's a good thing, I guess. Well, actually, it's not. Um, a helpful moron is really, really can set you back. So how long would all of this take you? Well, if you did it right and you did your research and experimented and downloaded a couple, let's say this whole thing takes one week, right? Um, so let's just make it one to two weeks. One to two weeks it should take you to really settle on what broker you want to use. Okay. Great. What is next? Well, next you need to learn the basics. Now this, for a lot of you who are already experienced traders, you're just 
not profitable traders, this is one of the steps that you might skip. But if you never really got to truly understand what it is you're trading, I'd recommend going back. If you have a grasp on it, great. If you don't, go back. So what do you need to learn? Well, off the bat, you need to learn stocks, right? It's pretty basic. Um, whether you're going long or you're going short. You got to understand what shorting means. Again, not going to explain it here, but understand what it means to short a stock and going long a stock, right? You're, you're hoping it goes up, you're buying shares. Options are a little bit more complicated. You need to make sure you understand options, calls and puts. That takes some time. There are really, McMillan, I mean, there are books on this that might take you months to read because a lot of them are very dry. There are tons of videos out there on it. And then finally, option spreads. Obviously, you need to understand options before you understand option spreads. But these three things are essential to know forward and backward. You should be able to take a test on these and ace it. You should not trade anything you do not understand. I see so many people who are stuck in a call option and then they're asking what a call option is, or they take a butterfly or a, or a call debit spread and they don't really get what those spreads are doing. And now they're stuck. If you don't know what they're doing, you don't know how to leg out of them. You don't know how to manage them. You should never, ever, ever take a trade you don't understand. So take the time, study the basics. I'm not talking strategy. I'm not talking analysis yet. I'm talking the basics. That also includes terminology. It's almost if you've ever wandered into a trading chat room, it's kind of like sitting at a poker table. There's rules, there's um, a code of conduct, there's ways that people will announce their trade. And if you violate those rules, people will jump all over you for it. I will jump all over you for it. So learn the terminology too. You know, if someone says, I am short um, PayPal long this strike put you shouldn't be confused you shouldn't be like wait you said you're short and you're long you should know what that means and you should know how to announce a trade so terminology very important and you need to learn details and by that i mean things like what is a bid ask spread that's the type of details I'm talking about. There is a ton of details behind each one of these with options. There are the Greeks, option spreads, can either be a debit or credit. There's a lot of details that go into all of these, but outside of just stocks and options, there's a general trading details that you should know um, while you're trading. So a bid ask spread being one of them. Is it better for a bid ask spread to be wide or is it better for it to be tighter, right? Um, answer, it depends. If you're trying to scalp a spread, sometimes a, a wide bid ask spread is not a bad thing. But again, you should feel confident you can take a test and ace it when you finish this step. And you should not proceed until you finish this step. Videos, books, the subreddit, uh, read the damn wiki, a lot of it's in there. But learn the basics. How long does this take? This should take you three to six months. 
Some people will do it quicker. It all depends on how much time you have to devote. Some of you are working full time and can only do this at nights and you can read only a little bit out of a time. But this is not a step you want to rush through. Make sure you have it down. I know you want to start trading. I know you want to start making money, but make sure you have this down. If you can do it in two to three weeks, great. And guess what? There are plenty of quizzes and tests online that you can take to see how knowledgeable you really are. Okay. Next, learn the analysis. Okay. There are two types of analysis that are done in the world of stocks. It's fundamental and technical. Okay. Pretty simple. If you're a trader, that means you are a short term investor, day trader, swing trader. You would know what those mean if you finished step two. Day trader, swing trader. Fundamental analysis deals with the actual finances and the climate around the company itself. So if you're looking at GM, well, you'd want to know what their price to earnings ratio is, what their um, cash flow might be, their projections going forward are. All of that is called fundamental analysis, the, the, the climate for um, any of their new products coming up, overhead, because that deals with investing in a stock long term. You're going to buy GM and you're going to hold it. You might not check, you might check it once a month. You're just going to hold it and because you like the company and your analysis of the company or chances are someone else's analysis of the company that you agree with. And in years from now, you cash in and make money. In a bull market, most stocks are going to make money. So it's a matter of picking the ones that will make the most, right? Okay. But technical analysis is different. Technical analysis deals with the charts. We are looking at the more immediate price action. Price action is the volume and price movement of a stock. Technical analysis is the method you use to paint a picture, create a story as to what is happening with this stock. We look at these candles and use indicators averages, studies, to truly understand what is going on and what might happen. This will be one of the more difficult things to learn. When doing this, technical analysis, use paper trading out from your broker. You want to be looking at the charts. You want to understand them. Start simple. Start with moving averages. Averages, both simple and exponential. Move on from there to indicators. Um, you know, there's the MACD. Do not look at the RSI. It's a shit indicator. Um, there is, uh, you know, um, the cloud. The um, There's the Haken Ashy candles. Um, there's tons of different indicators that you can use to help you better paint a picture as to what's going on. Now, does that mean you should learn every single study there is, well, that would be ridiculous because if you take a look here, look at how many studies there are. There are tons of studies. So here, momentum studies, there's, this is just A through M, right? So no, you don't need to know all of these. In fact, most traders don't even know 
one tenth of these. But you do need to know the more popular ones, the ones that are commonly used. Why is that? Because technical analysis in a large way depends on a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why is that? Because it goes with group consensus. If everyone believes that, let's go back here, let's go here. If everyone believes that this line here, this 50 moving average for SoFi is resistance, meaning the stock will have trouble getting above this price, then when it gets to that price, there will be a group activity, a group action of people selling unless there is some mitigating circumstances that push it through. So the more well-known, the more used indicators, the more powerful they're going to be, right? If I put up here the, the 64 simple moving average, nobody's going to give a shit. No one's looked at it, right? It, it's not going to matter. But the 100, the 200, the 50, yeah, people look at those. Algorithms are programmed by institutions based on these. That makes their buying and selling decisions. So you need to understand them. Understand the core of technical analysis, what volume tells you, what the charts tell you. So you can look at a chart and be able to tell the story of what's going on. Use paper trading to practice your, your expertise of all of these. For example, Let's say you're learning about um, how the three and the eight cross each other, the EMAs, right? So let's see here. The white is uh, the three, the eight, and the purple is the three, right? We see here the purple line crosses the white line, three crosses over the eight, and look, goes up, 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 up. So if you had a buy signal right here, and you kept that buy signal on until it crossed back again right here. Now here's where you sold right there, bought here, sold there, all the way down, bought here, sold there. So if you even automated this, that would work out, right? It doesn't always work out like that, by the way, but use paper trading to get a handle on these techniques. You need to know technical analysis. It is the foundation of what you will use as a professional full-time trader. Okay. How long is this going to take you? This will definitely take you minimum six months time. You should be studying it, watching videos on it, trading on the paper trading, talking to others about it, asking questions about it, going to the forums. You should have a really good understanding of technical analysis when you're done with this step. Step four, find good scanners and charting software. Well, a lot of people just use their broker. Right, so number one is your broker. But sometimes a good scanner is the make or break of your career as a trader, right? So a scanner is very important and you want a good one. The charting, that's not as important, but this is a matter of comfort, right? how easy it is. I like TC2000 for charting. I think it's good, but this is a, a subscription program, right? I like Option Stalker for scanning. Put it over here. Okay. There are great built in scans here. I could say I want a day trade and stocks that had relative strength, 
And then I see them and I can click on them here and go right to it. Look at the charts. I can say I want to swing trade and I want stocks that look good on a daily basis. I can go here. I'll look at this. This here broke through horizontal resistance here. Looks good. This is a good scanner. This also has the ability to do custom scans. I could say I want option liquidity to be negative two. I want heavy volume over the prior day's high. Make sure it had relative strength. Hit scan. Here's my list of stocks right there. I can then click on them and go through each one and see if they're something I want to trade. This is a very good scanner. Right. So there are um, scans that you do at the moment, like this one here. And then there are scans that are constantly running throughout the day. So this has a good scanner in it, in my opinion. TC2000 allows you to build great scans right here. You can build a lot of them. This also allows you to build scans based on time. So if I say I want stocks that have hit a 50-day high and then they retrace back to their EMA, then they made a new high after that in that order, scan for all stocks that qualify in that time order, it will give me that and that will constantly scan for it. So I can program that. It's called flex scanning. But there are many different scanners out there. There are also... Um, scanners like Finvis, right? This is a free scanner. I You can pay for the Elite, which I do, and it gives some extra options, but um, you can go here and all, and scan for stocks that are above their, 50% uh, above their 20-day moving average, and you can make sure that they have high relative volume, all of that. It's limited. You're, you're limited to these choices, but for a free scanner, it's pretty good. Um, there are a lot of different ways. Chat rooms, which we'll get to in a moment, are also a great way to find stocks. Here's the one option chat room, um, Reddit chat room. but um, don't depend on chat rooms alone. Okay. So this whole process of finding good scanners and charting software, it shouldn't take you that long, but it also is a matter of how much are you willing to spend? Right? That is a important question. Like this. Because remember, this is your career. This is something you want to do. And let's say you were, I don't know, training for marathon or a bike race. Would you be able to do that and not spend any money? No, you'd have to get shoes. You'd have to maybe get a gym membership. You'd have to, I mean, you get what you pay for. Finviz is probably one of the best of the free ones, but you have to Think, how much are you willing to invest in this career? A scanner is a really good investment because that's going to give you what stocks you are going to trade for that day. So I would try to figure out how much money you're willing to dedicate to this. You're already dedicating a lot of time. So the question becomes how much money, right? How long does it take to do all this time? Let's say it's about one month. You test out a bunch. By the end of a month, you should have all this. You should figure it out, decide which ones you want to subscribe to, have your scanner, your charting. Maybe it's all wrapped up in your broker. Great. I think Thinkorswim's uh, scanner sucks. It never gives good, re good re results. But others use it and maybe have different levels of success. I've never really 
met or spoke to someone who's a full-time trader and they use the Thinkorswim scanner as their primary source of trades. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, I'm just saying I've never met the person. So in my world, it doesn't exist. Okay. Step five, choose a journal. This is an online journal that you're going to upload your trades to analyze them. There are many. There are Trader Sync, Trader View. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. I'll show you. I use, what do I use? I use Trader Sync. Right? This is from the 5K challenge here. Trader Sync is great. It um, you can label your setups, you can label your mistakes, you have your trades here, you can look at an overview of them, right? You can look at your returns down here, you can evaluate them, go to the dashboard, you can quickly see what setups return the best, which mistakes cost you the most, what times of the day you were most successful, you can go way, way down the rabbit hole on this thing to really get a, a good um, grasp on what is working and not working with your trading, right? Okay. Picking a good journal, this investment, I would actually put ahead of the investment for a scanner because what you need to do once you pick one is learn how to analyze trades. Setups to mistakes. There are lots of videos out there that will help teach you how to analyze your trades. I suggest you watch them when you get to this step and pick a good trading journal, get used to its functionality, because this will be the thing that you're using to grade yourself at least once a week. Step six, choose a strategy. Okay, so by now you've learned the basics, you've learned technical analysis, you've picked a good scanner and a good charting software, you've already picked a broker, you now have your trading journal, now it's time to decide on a good strategy. Well, let me tell you what not to decide on. No scalping. Stop with the damn scalping. That's not clear enough. I don't know what it is. Stop scalping. Stop it. It can be really profitable. Yes, we've all seen Ross from Warrior Trading and he scalps and these low float gappers and great. And he is a professional doing it. He's got tons of data information and hotkeys and, and knows how to make every second of the trade count. You do not. Scalping is one of the more difficult things to do in trading. Only experienced traders should be scalping. There are other types of strategies that people use to decide if you're going to be a swing trader first or a day trader. You need to learn how to trade with margin. Are you going to be a trader that primarily trades options or stocks or both. If you trade options, are you going to rely on spreads? If so, what kind? Do you plan on being an aggressive trader or conservative? There are different strategies that you can use. Now we teach in the subreddit, a strategy based on relative strength 
strength versus spot, right? There are others, right? There's um, volume profile strategies and pivot strategies. I'd encourage you to look through them all. What is most important though, is when you find a strategy, what you really need to find is someone who uses that strategy in their trading and is successful. That makes sense. Like you need to see that strategy actually work. It, it, it's not enough for it to make sense for you. Anyone can make a strategy look like it makes sense. Wall Street Bets has built its whole forum based on that. You could read an entire post on why volume profile is the best way to go in picking your entries and exits and or, you know, hey, can ask you candles. That's the thing. They all sound great. However, you want to see them in action and do not, do not decide on a strategy based on backtesting. I am a former statistician. I was a professor of statistics. I am telling you, backtesting is not going to solve your problem. It will overfit your problem. If you back tested the three eight cross, guess what? Every time the three cross to the eight, it's going to instantaneously buy. Are you going to instantaneously buy there? Are you going to instantaneously sell the moment the eight crosses back under the three? Are you going to buy and sell and get the the prices and the rates that? you're going to be back testing at using old data you are going to overfit and it will come back oh my god this strategy is 84 percent successful 84 percent win rate and then you try it and it's 52 and you're wondering what happened no you want to see the strategy implemented in real time that is why i post all my trades in real time because you can see the strategy working or not working in real time, implemented. So once you've done that, now you've decided you've got strategy, you've got journal, you got all this stuff. You found one that you want to implement or try. Now keep in mind, you haven't really started trading yet, certainly not with money. You can paper trade. And I do suggest that once you pick your strategy, paper trade it in real time. Now you're not gonna get the exact prices on paper trading in real time, but you'll get close enough to see if your strategy is working or not. Try out a bunch, use the online journal with it and find out which one's working the best. This whole process should take you at least, at least six months. Of Finding, validating, and using with paper trading the strategy. Okay. Number seven, decide on a community or no community. Some traders like to trade alone. Some like to trade, so you have people who like to trade alone by themselves, nobody else around, just that. You have others who don't necessarily join a community, but they you use social media, you know, Twitter, Reddit. It's not really a, a paid community, it's just more of you're getting information from other people. And then finally, you have the paid communities. But a lot of these are scams. So um, what are the benefits? The benefit of paid community is a good one. We'll have pros in it. Someone who can actually help you and show you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. 
a good community with pros. We'll have pros that'll take the time to actually help people trade, learn how to trade. You will get good trade ideas. They can provide great resources. I belong to one option. I may know secret about that. I don't work for one option. I don't own one option, but I do enjoy being a member of one option. Now I've tried various other communities, some good, some not so good. I mean, warrior trading. Okay. It's a very popular community. It's very, very focused on low float scalp scalping. So if you, um, join that community. Yeah, they have a lot of great resources. It's very expensive, but that's pretty much what you're going to learn. Now they have separate classes for other types of trading, but really it is Ross doing low, fo low float scalping. Is that 10 times fast? I guess. Find a good one is my recommendation because I think it helps you to after hours. I mean, if you look here, In the chat room, you'll see people are just discussing, this is today, strategies, builds of computers and different, different strategies that they used throughout the day, questions, what their trades were, all of this. This I find invaluable, but other people like to trade alone. And if you feel that you work better alone, by all means, you should do that. This should not take you very long. This should take you around two weeks. Right. So how much time have we spent so far? Well, one to two weeks, three to six months, another six months, and then you're at a year, right? Minimum nine months, nine and a half months to a year. Well, now you're at about, I don't know, 10 and a half months to 13 months. Choosing a journal, sorry to put this in here, but that should be like one week. Shouldn't take very long. It's another six months. This is two weeks. You're at about two years. That's what it should take before you're really, really ready to start trading. Can you do it quicker? Sure. But if you want to do it right, that's how long it takes. Now, if you have no job and you're full-time and no, no full-time job and you have all the time in the world to dedicate to this, you could maybe do all this in six months. I'm assuming you, most people don't have time to dedicate to this other than a few minutes here and there. So, okay. Now, what is next? Well, next on the list is, let's see, start trading. Number eight. There we are. And what do you want to do? Start small. That's what you want to do. You are starting small. And I am talking one share or one contract per trade. A lot of people will make sure, you know, you need $25,000 to day trade. I don't give me that crap about a cash only account. I posted about this. It is not the way to go. But if you don't have that, you should be swing trading and trading very small. If you cannot make a profit with one share and one contract, you're not going to make a profit with 10. And you're not going to make a profit with 100. Use everything you've learned and start trading. Do not increase your position size until you are consistently profitable. Pretty basic. Number nine, you want to set your goals. Remember, 
trading is a business. So treat it like that. How much are you here? How much are you investing in your business? How much do you want to make each month? capital are you starting with? It's just like a business. You should have a PL. You should have it all worked out that, okay, I need to make $15,000 in profit a month. I am going to do that. I have $35,000 to start with. This is my goals. And then keep track of them throughout. Finally, get an accountant because you're going to want to make sure you have trader status, number one, with the IRS. You're going to want to make sure you pay taxes correctly and write off everything you can, whether you're going to open an LLC or an S Corp, all of that trade through those, make sure you have an account. Now, obviously, if you're in step eight and you're not yet consistently profitable, don't go get an accountant yet. But once you know, okay, this is something I can do. This is something I can make a career. Yes, then step nine, then step 10. Okay, those are the 10 steps and it takes a long time. But if you are not consistently profitable, I suggest going back to the beginning and doing these. And when you get to the end, you will be certainly a lot better off than you are right now. I hope this helped everyone. And if it didn't, and if there's still more you need to know, you know what you can do. You can go read the damn wiki.